I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but guess what? All your carefully written code will become deprecated, all your considerate architecture decisions will become technical debt, and all the time you spend deciding between frameworks and libraries will be, at the end of the day, wasted. Sounds too harsh? Am I overly dramatic? I don't think so. Let me explain. A few weeks back, this article gained a bit of traction in the dev world, most likely because it probably felt like a breath of fresh air for a lot of devs. Why is that? Well, you see, developers tend to take pride in the programming languages and the frameworks they work with. They spend hundreds of hours in various tech stack echo chambers and, after a while, they end up identifying with the tools they are using. I'm no better, since I was a strong believer in libraries that end up deprecated more often than I like to admit. Let's spend the next couple of minutes reviewing some of the highlights of my programming career, and by highlights I mean instances when the code I wrote became deprecated almost immediately. I apologize in advance, but I fear that by the end of this video, I'll end up making a case for PHP and jQuery. Okay, so the first mistake on the list is... Java. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. I've written Java code daily for almost 10 years, and it honestly feels like you are writing technical depth in real time. Don't get me wrong, it is a great feeling, and there is nothing better than the job security you gain by using an abstract singleton proxy factory bin. However, these days, I feel like everything I accomplished in Java could have been achieved faster and more efficiently in a language like Kotlin. I'm not sorry though, it's always comforting to know I can go back to Java in my 40s and retire writing interfaces and abstract classes on a six-figure salary. I made way worse decisions when choosing front-end tools, but before looking at that, here are some Java frameworks I learned and used just to end up replacing them a few years later. Don't worry, I know discussing Java in a YouTube video is literally a retention killer, so I'll briefly go through the topic. I think it's important though, because it will prove that even mature ecosystems like Java had for a long time the same issues we are now complaining about in the JavaScript space. So I started Java web development on a legacy Apache Struts 1 project, doing MVC and tons of configs in XMLs. Then I found out that Apache Struts 2 is a stable, way better option. I proceeded to learn and use that for a little while, until Spring Boot 1 was released, and, all of a sudden, every Java job posting was asking for Spring experience. I'm sticking with Spring to this day, but it's funny to see how Spring's internals are dragging it down compared to some of the more modern alternatives, so I expect Spring will have real competition really soon. Oh, by the way, during this time I also used Google Web Toolkit, which now returns this result when googling it, and Oracle's Java Server Faces, which has similar Google results. Nothing spells confidence in the future, like people having to poke you to check if you are still breathing. Architecture-wise, I still feel like I'm deep down in the technical depth trenches. I built monoliths just to listen to everybody tell me that microservices are better, and now I'm building microservices just to spend half of my time on DevOps work and the other half listening to everybody tell me that the monolith is better. I built MVC applications with HTML rendered on the server, and people told me we have to decouple and do separation of concerns with REST backends and standalone SPAs frontends. So I refactored a bunch of stuff for people to then revolutionize web development by moving the rendering process back on the server. And then call lazy loaded JavaScript work progressive enhancement and act like we didn't do something similar for the past 15 years with plain jQuery. And yes, on the front end things were even worse. There was this time, probably a week into studying it, when I thought I mastered JavaScript. And as one would do after scratching the surface of a topic he doesn't really understand, I concluded there is no way people will use JavaScript, and I focused on learning CoffeeScript instead. Well, we all know how that one turned out. Library-wise, I was all over the place. I built products in Knockout.js, and then rewritten them in this established long-term solution called AngularJS. I spent time learning Backbone, and even more time learning and working with Ember. I dare you to find these ones in the state of JavaScript survey results these days. Sure, I'm working with React now, which also seems like an established long-term solution, but most of the videos on this channel are about me looking at faster, more efficient alternatives, so I'm not sure what the future will bring for React. If there is one lesson to be learned here, is that as a developer, you really should care more about the problems you are solving and less about the tools you are using. At the end of the day, the goal is to provide an appealing, reliable, and sellable product to your users. If the product is written in Rust and Wasm, great. 
If it's written in PHP and jQuery, well, then I'm even more impressed.